Oh, just look at these mushrooms. They are beautiful. Chanterelle mushrooms are renowned for their high vitamin D content due to exposure to sunlight in their natural habitat. A half cup of chanterelles provides 30 to 100% of your daily recommended intake. Dave decided to go for a hike this morning. He came home with a very large amount of freshly picked chanterelle mushrooms. I'm going to need to preserve a large portion of these mushrooms. We can't eat them all right now. In our climate, it's typically around the middle of July that chanterelle mushrooms are just starting to be at their prime. Depending on where you are, if you're in a warmer climate, you'll probably likely need to start looking a little bit sooner. No matter how hard you try to make sure you get no dirt on your mushrooms, they grow in the dirt, so there's going to be dirt on them. So we need to thoroughly wash these mushrooms before we can start to preserve them. We do not soak them. This does not mean soaking them. This does not mean putting a bunch of salt on them or anything like that. All we do is just give them a good spray and wash off that dirt. That's it, that's all we need, just water and a little bit of pressure and you have nice clean mushrooms. I'm going to divide these mushrooms in half. This half is for the dehydrator, so I'll put those aside and I'll grab the other half and we'll start to chop them up and I'll show you how we cook them and freeze them for the most optimum flavor profile. Oh, just look at these mushrooms. They are beautiful and they're so tasty. A lot of people think that we produce a lot of our own food because we're like doom day prepper, but really it's because we're foodies and we really like the taste of really good food. And fresh wild chanterelle mushrooms, that's really good food. Chanterelle mushrooms are renowned for their high vitamin D content due to exposure to sunlight in their natural habitat. Unlike many commercially grown mushrooms that lack vitamin D because of indoor cultivation. A half cup of chanterelles provides 30 to 100% of your daily recommended intake of vitamin D, which supports bone health, acts as an anti-inflammatory agent, and aids calcium absorption for stronger bones. Additionally, chanterelle mushrooms are rich in polysaccharides, which have been shown to protect cells, boost the immune system, and reduce inflammation. Besides vitamin D and polysaccharides, chanterelles are a plentiful source of various vitamins and minerals, including beta carotene, vitamins A, B6, C, and E, thiamine, riboflavin, potassium, selenium, manganese, copper, iron, and phosphorus. Who knew eating delicious wild foods could be this healthy? Oh, these smell so good. I like to chop the stem in at least half because it's one of the denser parts of the mushrooms. So when you want to cook them evenly, you kind of want them all the same. You always need to cook wild mushrooms. It is not safe to eat most mild, wild mushrooms raw, including these. There's very few wild mushrooms that would be considered safe raw. So this is probably enough for one batch. Starting with a hot pan, I'm just going to move the mushrooms in here. Just, just the mushrooms by themselves. This first step is to draw the water out of the mushrooms. So first things are gonna get a little wet. We'll leave them in here until all the water is drawn out and then evaporated. You can start seeing a bunch of water here forming in the pan. See a lot more of the water has been drawn out. There's actually a layer of water in the pan now. So we need to keep on going until this, this layer of water is gone. It's evaporated. I right, turn it up a little bit. Okay, the water is almost all completely gone. There's just a little bit of water left. So now we're gonna add in the butter. So the reason why we add in butter is mainly to coat the mushrooms. So we're just going to melt the butter and toss the mushrooms in it so they're nice and coated and they do not get freezer burn when they're put in the freezer. We're also going to vacuum seal these so that's another line of defense against uh, freezer burn. We have the benefit of video editing. We can actually show you just how much they have shrunk. So cut to that now. Wow, look at that. Okay, it's done. Gotta get this off the heat. Now it's ready to move on to the next step, which is vacuum sealing. And I think this will make two portions. So I'm going to transfer them into the vacuum sealed bags, which I will then put in the freezer for a bit to solidify the butter so that's easier to vacuum seal them. So first step is just put them in these bags. 
I'm gonna use this spoon, it's a little bit easier to work with. So all those mushrooms just reduce down to two portions. So now we have the two packages, which we're going to cool in the freezer so that it solidifies more and it's easier to vacuum seal. For the second half of the mushrooms, I'm going to dehydrate them. The reason why we do two methods is just for backup in case the freezer goes down. We do find that the most flavorful method is the sauteing them and adding the butter, but it is good to have the backup and the dehydrated ones really aren't that bad at all. So generally, um, we like to cut the bigger ones in half before we dehydrate them. Some people like to do it whole, but we find when you have more even sizes of mushrooms, it dehydrates better. So we're just going to cut these relatively the same sizes, make sure the thicker stems are cut in half. Now I'm just going to throw these on the tray. Um, the less you have them overlapping to start, the better, but as I said, they're going to shrink a lot, so you don't need to be that worried about them overlapping a bit to start. Okay, I might throw some more on here, but I'm just gonna put it in here for now. So I think this is the last tray for this dehydrator. In the dehydrator it goes. We dehydrate these at 55 degrees Celsius or somewhere around 130. And this will take several hours to do, but don't go by time, go by texture, just make sure all the moisture is gone. These have been in the freezer for about 15, 20 minutes. And as you can see, the butter has solidified. You can use this trick for basically anything that's wet. So now we're gonna seal it up. Speaking of seals, I used to put hats on seals. This is done. Toss a label on them with the year and the type of mushroom we have here. Off to the freezer they go. These have been going for about 12 to 14 hours and they are dry. Just look how much they've shrunk. They're crispy. There's no like moisture or flexibility left in the mushrooms. That's how you can tell that they are ready. So that basket of fresh mushrooms turned into just this much of the dehydrated ones. I'm going to store these in an airtight jar. So I have a large mason jar here with a leak-proof ball lid. You need the leak-proof lid so it can be airtight. Not all the lids that you can find out there are leak-proof, so I will link to these ones in the description if you're interested in them. Put them in the jar. Ta-da! There we go. Again, we want a leak-proof, airtight lid so there's no moisture getting in here. You can also put some of those like silica dehydrating packs in here if you're, if you're worried or you don't have the best lids. You really want to keep these dry in order to keep them stored for the longest period of time. We started with just over 11 pounds of fresh chanterelle mushrooms and we ended up with nine two-person vacuum sealed portions of sauteed mushrooms and about two liters or 150 grams of dehydrated mushrooms. And these are just one of the many different kinds of wild mushrooms that we consume and store in our pantry. So check out our other videos on other wild mushrooms and other wild forageables.